Hello, everyone. If we have not met before, my name is Sydney Kraviak, and I'm the Program and Outreach Coordinator at Peters Township Public Library, working primarily with our adult programs. And this evening, we have a magical one for you. We have Liz Winters, um, who is local here to Peters Township, and she also has a travel agency that focuses on Disney trips. So I'm going to hand it over to Liz and her friends, um, and they're going to share some information with us tonight. Everyone's camera and microphone is muted for now, but once we get to the in, um, feel free to ask questions and you'll be able to turn your camera and microphone on or you can type in the chat throughout the program. Thank you so much for being with us tonight, Liz. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Peters Township Library, for inviting us for this special evening. Um, we're really excited to be here and hope that everybody learns a little something um, about Disney. So again, I'm Liz Winter, and I'm gonna get my PowerPoint here started because I have a cute little screen that shows exactly who we are. <clears throat> Share screen, that would help. Okay. All right, here we go. So here we are. Um, that's me over there in the blue shirt, Liz Winter. Um, I live right here in Venetia with my three kids and my husband who I actually met while working at the world famous Jungle Cruise at the Walt Disney World Resort. And that is where the love of Disney truly began. Um, in the middle there, that's Christy Cobley. She's sitting here in the uh, cream colored sweater. Um, and Christy has been with us almost since the start. Yeah, I'd say it's almost six years now, I believe, yeah. in April. Yeah, so Christy is extremely passionate about all dis Disney destinations, specifically Walt Disney World and Disney Cruise Line. Those are her two loves. She also lives close by um, in North, North Strabane, right over the township line. And then um, over there with those pretty rainbow ears in the pink shirt, that's Jen Wollstonecroft. And she is also joining us from Peters Township. You've been with us for almost three years. Almost three years. And again, super passionate about Disney destinations. So first we wanted to start and say, as I'm sure all of you know, Disney pretty much owns the whole world. Um, Disney Destinations is comprised of many destinations. So of course, Walt Disney World in Florida, Disneyland in um, California, which is the original Disney destination. And then we have Aulani in Oahu, Hawaii, Adventures by Disney, which is luxury guided group travel, Disney Cruise Line, one of our very personal favorites, uh, Disney's Hilton Head Resort, in Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, and then Disney's Vero Beach Resort in Vero Beach, Florida. Um, we could also, you know, go on and on about Shanghai Disneyland and Tokyo Disneyland, but tonight we are just here to mainly focus on Walt Disney World in Lake Buena Vista, Florida. So um, as you've probably seen, if you watch any TV or read any news, uh, Walt Disney World is celebrating this year their 50th anniversary. It actually started on October 1st of 2021, which means October 1st, 1971 is when the Walt Disney World Resort officially opened, starting with the Magic Kingdom. It encompasses 49 square miles, which is 27 acres. It's the largest theme park in the world. It does include four parks, which is Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Hollywood Studios, and Disney's Animal Kingdom two water parks, so Blizzard Beach and Typhoon Lagoon, a sports complex. So if you hear um, a lot about, you know, folks that go down to compete in cheer competitions or there's um, spring training for baseball is there. We're looking at the ESPN sports complex there on Disney property. And then there's also a massive shopping, dining and entertainment outdoor open air complex called Disney Springs, formerly known as Downtown Disney and Disney's Marketplace. There are also 30 Disney owned hotels and almost 20 good neighbor hotels, which we'll get into in just a little bit exactly what that means. And then right there on the bottom, you see a fun fact is that Walt Disney World can actually fit 53 Disneylands in it. And again, Disneyland is out in Anaheim, California. It's the original park. Um, and those parks are really cool because Disneyland Park and then California Adventure, those are the two main parks there. And they're only separated by the, about a length of a football field. So they're walkable, whereas Walt Disney World is not. Walt Disney World is massive. So like I mentioned, the magic is calling and that's the theme right now at the Walt Disney World Resort. Um, and again, October 1st, 2021, Christy and myself were actually there. We were the crazy people. What time were we there? At like I felt like it was like 
4 a.m. Yeah, right? we it maybe was... got three or four hours of sleep and we decided we had to be there opening the park oh. um, on, <laughs> on that day. We just were convinced that it was going to be super magical and it was. It was also super busy. Um, exhausting. And very exhausting, but just kind of fun to say that we were there for that. Um, and it actually goes all the way through April of 2023. So you have not missed out if you've not yet gotten the chance to um, start planning. And um, what 50 years of magic means at the Walt Disney World Resort is it's not just at the Magic Kingdom, which is pictured here with the beautiful castle, although let's start there first. So the castle right there, it lights up just like that at night, these gorgeous projections. It's absolutely stunning. Um, there's also a new special fireworks uh, celebration called Enchantment, and um, that features a gorgeous fireworks display every single night, as well as um, animation that's actually projected not only on the castle, but all over the buildings down Main Street USA. It's, it's stunning. There's nothing like it. Um, and then it also means that there are snacks, special snacks in the park. So right there pictured are churros. They actually have this iridescent edible glitter on them. So like fun snacks, drinks throughout all four theme parks. Um, the resorts even have the 50th uh, mats, like the doormats at all of the doors. They have special K-cups in the Keurig machines in the rooms, all kinds of special fun things. Um, the big thing with the 50th right now, the theming is this iridescent you know, theme that they have going on, those colors that the characters are wearing. That's the type of thing you're going to see on the special parade cavalcades, all kinds of magic going on right now. And again, that's going on all the way through April 2023. So there's still plenty of time considering Disney is only allowing us to book um, packages through the end of this calendar year right now. So now I'm going to go ahead and pass it on over to Christy here. So Christy actually doesn't even need this slideshow or any notes because this is the type of thing she talks about all day long. All but. day, every day. <laughs> so if you're here, obviously you have an interest in Disney and you were thinking potentially about going. So how do you go from point A to point B to point C and actually get there? So there's a lot of different things to look at when you're planning a, a trip to Walt Disney World. The first thing you need to look at are your dates. When can you go? Because obviously your dates are going to um, reflect availability at the park. So you take a look at the dates, when you wanna travel, um, how many park days do you wanna spend in the parks? You can customize your package and say how many days you wanna go to the parks. How many nights are you going to be there? Also, um, what season do you wanna go? How will the crowds be? So when you initially start planning your trip, you wanna look at those components. And once you're able to narrow down your dates, then we can look at what type of availability there is for resorts. And also you'll be looking to work within your budget at that point too. Within Walt Disney World, there are five different resort categories, value, moderate, deluxe, deluxe villa, and good neighbor hotels. Each one of those categories has a different price point. Value going to be the least expensive. Deluxe villas going to be the most expensive. And good neighbors probably falling right along there in the middle. So once you pick your dates, then you take a look at those over 30 different hotels on property to decide which one is going to work best for your family based on location, room size, the different type of accommodations in the hotel, whether or not it has a kitchen in a villa, or whether or not it can sleep four guests or six guests. Lots of different things to decide when you're looking at the resort type for your family. Good neighbor hotels are slightly at the edge of property. Um, the most uh, Frequently booked ones are going to be the um, Good Neighbor Hotels at Disney Springs. So those are going to be some brand name hotels that come along with some of those Disney perks. And that's why people opt to stay there because they're still close to the magic, but not necessarily right in the middle of the magic. So once you pick your dates, once you pick your hotel, then you start to customize what you want your vacation to look like. So the big part of that is going to be tickets. How many days do you want to go to the park? And you can customize your tickets to any number of days that you want to visit, obviously within the length of stay that you're going to be there. Tickets aren't just a one size fits all. There are base tickets 
tickets that allow you to visit one park per day. There are park hopper tickets that allow you to visit more than one park per day starting at 2 p.m. That's a new rule that you need to be aware of when you're park hopping. The park hopper plus ticket will allow you to visit um, various venues on site as well as the water parks. A park hopper plus ticket is going to get you as many visits to the water park as you have days of tickets. Um, and so you can explore Blizzard Beach and Typhoon Lagoon along with Epcot, Magic Kingdom, Hollywood Studios and Animal Kingdom. When you pick a ticket, you do not have to go to different parks on those tickets. If you wanted to go four days to the Magic Kingdom, you could do just that. You're not necessarily locked into certain parks when you um, buy your ticket. However, something that is new with Walt Disney World this year are park pass reservations. So prior to visiting Walt Disney World Resort, you have to declare the parks that you want to visit and um, pick the days that you want to visit them. If it's four Magic Kingdom days, that's great. If it's one in each park, that's great too. Again, all one of those components of the planning process. So once you choose your dates, once you choose your hotel, once you select your tickets, then you look at all of the add-ons that can be included in your vacation as well. The first and biggest thing that you're gonna hear about right now is Genie Plus, which is Disney's new Skip the Line system. It is a three part component in the My Disney Experience app that either allows you to have the free component of the Genie, the $15 per person per day component of Genie Plus that allows you to skip over 40 attractions across Walt Disney World Resorts. And then we have the third component, which is individual lightning lanes, which allow you to skip select rides on a pay per ride basis. Those individual lightning lanes are not going to be chosen in your package. That is something you will do on a daily basis through the app. In addition to that Genie Plus function, you can also add Memory Maker, which is an unlimited photo package you can put in your, in your Walt Disney World travel package for $169. And that's going to give you access to all of the photographers throughout the park, as well as uh, ride photos and um, videos that they take on certain attractions. Do you want to have insurance on your vacation? That's something else that you can add to your package to assure that your investment, and that's what this vacation is, it's an investment to ensure your investment is protected. You also need to consider how you're going to get to and from the airport, if you're going to drive to the resort and what um, the parking fees would be at a specific category of resort if you decide to, to drive. Are you going to rent a stroller inside of the park or are you going to use an outside vendor to rent a stroller or a scooter? Those are options you need to consider as well. Magic bands are an extra part of the package as well. Those will allow you to access the parks and access your tickets. It will allow you to open your door. It will also allow you to access your Genie Plus attractions and it will allow you to charge back to your resort room um, from the parks and never have to lift a credit card while you're there. It will also give you access to a dining plan. Dining plans are a pre-COVID thing at this point. Um, essentially, it was a way to make your vacation feel all-inclusive so that your meals were included in um, the price of your vacation as well. Currently, Disney is not offering dining plans, although they have told us that they will be back we are unsure when that might be. So looking at the whole big picture of planning the vacation, there is a lot to decide before you can actually say, we're going to Walt Disney World. And I do just wanna mention one tip that was great. Um, I wanna mention a tip about if you are traveling with little ones, we always, we, we always get the question of, are they too young to go? Well, there's a reason that Disney allows children under the age of three to be completely free. So that means that um, they can stay in your room and they um, can get into the parks for free. So under three is a fantastic age to go. And I always tell people that they might not remember the experience, but you will. I can't tell you how many, I have countless pictures and videos that are just some of my personal favorites of, of my kids, um, their first monorail ride, their first walk down Main Street. There's nothing like it. They don't remember those things, um, but mom and dad sure will. So under three, always free, and we don't see that changing anytime soon. Yes. So next up. 
Oh, okay. It's I'm still, still on. It's still on. That was just a little tip for you. For <laughs> so tips. that was right. just the package process. Okay. So once you have decided on a package and all of your components of package, then we kind of look at the timeline of planning for Walt Disney World because it's really not something that you can do overnight. Um, so essentially your deposit is going to be due at the time of booking. The deposit is going to depend on whether you do a package reservation or a room only reservation. And there are different rates for those types of deposits. Once your deposit's submitted, then your experience and your planning can begin. Um, you will have to create a My Disney Experience account. And as I mentioned earlier, when we were discussing park tickets, Immediately you need to secure park pass reservations because Walt Disney World isn't just buying a ticket and showing up at the gate um, anymore. You need to plan ahead as to where you're going to visit on which days. After all of that is set up, then you look at the timeline for planning dining and other special magical extras. Do you want a cabana at the pool? Does your son want to build a lightsaber in Hollywood Studios? Ooh, I want to go to Chef Mickey's. When can I book that? reservation. You take a look at where you want to go and on what days and then 60 days prior to your arrival, that magical window opens and you can start to secure all of those special things that you want to do. After that 60 days, after booking your park pass reservations and having your uh, My Disney Experience account established, the last thing to do is to make that final payment. And so 30 days before you travel to Walt Disney World, you will be able to submit your final payment. It's important to know that up until that final payment day, your $200 deposit or your room only deposit is fully refundable to you if you have to cancel for any reason. So really when you hit that 30 day mark, you know you're going to Walt Disney World. And even after that, we should mention as well that um, Disney has absolutely been one of the most, if not the most flexible travel partners that we've worked through during the past two years. Um, we, again, like we could not sing Disney praises enough. We're truly passionate about them and they've um, truly helped guests who, you know, haven't been able to go for no matter what the experience, um, or, or I'm sorry, not, not the experience, but the situation, no matter the situation for having to um, move their trip within that 30 days, they've been so flexible. I'm not saying you can cancel within that 30 days and receive a full refund. You can't expect that, but you can definitely expect a lot of flexibility um, after that 30 days if something should arise that needs, you know, it's an emergency situation. Um, they have been super flexible in helping with that. So any other thing that you can think of for this section In here? the advanced part, not so much. I, I think the next important thing would be learning the ins and outs of Genie for when you are actually there, because that's an important part of the whole process as well. But that's something that you will do when you're actually there and not in mm -hmm. advance. Yes. Yep. So now I'm going to take it over here to Jen, and she's going to let you know some money saving tips that we came up with that we would love to share. All right. So, um, before we get started, we're all going to um, tell you about some of the things that we tell our clients. Um, so to the point, uh, <laughs> some packing things. Yeah. <laughs> so packing you tips. definitely want packing tips that you definitely don't want to leave um, your home without. Um, you better not take all the good ones and just I leave know. us here. So. <laughs> then I'm going to be like, we are, we are brain 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 I, I know. Well, uh, my one, my favorite, because like what she's saying with um, Genie Plus and everything, it does, it will drain your rent battery at the parks and everything. And not just on top of Genie Plus, um, you're doing, you know, taking photos and you're um, maybe going on Facebook and posting or doing your TikTok videos and everything. So obviously that's going to drain your battery. So I definitely recommend bringing a battery pack, if not two, um, depending on how much you use your phone and how fast it dies. Um, those are going to be life saving. And all you have to do is plug it in that night and you're ready to go the next day and everything. So that was one key that uh, I definitely taught my clients um, to pack and everything. All right. And I have yours. to say, I have to say, forgetful me as much as I try to remember that because I know that's necessary. <laughs> I've traveled I'm with so... her. She doesn't remember her bad <laughs> ever, <laughs> ever. We give that tip to everybody. I am my own worst travel agent. I say that all my the time. My husband never forgets um, a battery pack. So, I can tell you that. <laughs> but so for anybody like me that has all of the best intentions of bringing something like that, Disney does not leave you hanging. There are fuel rod stations, it's called, um, where you can actually purchase one. And then whenever you drain that, because they're not the best, the ones that you buy somewhere like Best Buy, I'm sure you could find something better than this fuel rod. Um, but whenever you drain that in the park, you simply go back to one of the machines and slip it in. 
and get another one. Um, and it's it's just that one first time charge. You're not charged over and over again. And then you can take it back to the hotel with you. Um, you can plug it in overnight, fully charge it, and next day go back and do the same thing. It stays with you. It comes home with you. And that way um, you can use it at home. If you go back to Disney in the future, again, you can do it all over again. So I might have a few uh, fuel rods hanging out, <laughs> but um, my biggest tip and it's well it's kind of in this already so I don't want to take away from Jen's part of the presentation but this is one of my all-time favorites um, whether you're traveling with kids or not pack snacks in a bag I like to care or to bring a, a smaller suitcase not one of the full-size ones but a smaller one um, that I do check because I tend to go on Southwest where we get two bags checked for free um, and I will pack snacks especially for my kids granola bars um, you know, maybe those squeeze applesauce packs, maybe some extra, you know, candy treats. Um, I'll pack them in a suitcase, maybe fill half the suitcase up with that. And then, you know, they eat them during our trip. And then I have a bag for souvenirs because we've also been guilty of having to purchase um, <laughs> luggage at Disney and that is not cheap. So that's my biggest tip is to pack snacks so that you can have um, the bag space then for souvenirs. When you were talking about packing snacks, the first thing that pops into my mind, even though my daughter's now 13, every time we go, she wants one of those giant lollipops oh, yeah. that I think are probably <laughs> seven or eight dollars um, in the gift shops they sell the exact same thing at the Dollar Tree. So <laughs> buy yourself a few of those lollipops before you go. Then when they take one lick of the lollipop and they want to throw it away, you're not throwing $8 out the door because that typically happens. The other thing that you could potentially buy at the dollar store um, is a poncho because I really there is rarely, or rarely a day that it doesn't rain in Disney, especially in the summer with the thunderstorms. And you will get caught in them. And if you get caught in them and you don't have a poncho, you're again going to spend probably $15 to buy one that has Mickey Mouse on it that you probably will never wear again. So um, that's happened to me. Again, I don't bring the ponchos, but I know to tell people to bring the ponchos. <laughs> um, but generally, you can get them at Walmart or the Dollar Tree, just the real little ones so that you can keep dry. Um, in case you get that rain shower. That's a great tip. Right. Take it away, Jen. All right, so everybody likes to save money. Um, so first we'll start with gift cards. Gift card, gift cards, and more gift cards. <laughs> so um, you can use gift cards, actually anything. You can put it, uh, you can use it for your deposit. Um, you could put it for your final payment. And then you can also bring them along on your trip too as well um, for foods, um, souvenirs, whatever you would like to pay with a gift card. Um, a lot of these places too, um, there's places like Sam's Club or Costco, which will give you a discounted rate for um, gift cards. Or there is like Giant Eagle who you, then you get your fuel perks or your groceries. So who doesn't like free groceries or gas too as well. So um, it kind of plays hand in hand with that. Um, and then we have the next one is the grocery delivery and pack snacks, like what Liz said. Um, I have small kids. Um, I have one that's a very, 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 very picky eater. Um, so I need to bring those snacks with me because I need to make sure he's not getting hangry um, <laughs> in the middle of the day. <laughs> because as many of you might have smaller kids, you know, the minute all of a sudden they're fine and then two minutes later they're screaming because they're hungry and everything. So snacks are great to have. I usually take a little lunch bag with me, put my snacks in. Um, we always do a grocery delivery system. Um, there's so many ones that we'll deliver to Walt Disney World. Um, the only thing now, pan, um, post pandemic, um, is that you have to be at the resort to pick your groceries up. Um, no, they can no longer store your groceries. Um, they will, you have to be present to meet your grocer there. Um, Bellhop can help with sometimes usually you have to pay a little fee and everything to help have them to help you. Um, but yeah, so groceries definitely help. Um, I also get all these breakfasts to go. So when we're heading out the door, they're eating their snacks while we get to whatever transportation we need to go to. Um, number one is the reusable water bottle. Um, that's a must to have too as well. Um, part of your grocery delivery, you can have bottles of water to fill up your water bottle before you go to the park so you're all ready to go. Um, and then there's a lot of, um, there's bottle stations by the bathrooms you can fill up and um, a lot of the quick service or carts that have um, the like, pop dispensers will have, you can get free water from them to fill up your water bottle. So that's nice to have, um, especially during those hot, hot, humid summer days. Um, another one for money saving is the to pick a non-peak season. 
Um, that's a little hard right now, um, just because uh, right now I'm um, with the pandemic. A lot of people have pent up demand to travel right now. So there isn't really a non-peak season right now for Disney. And we unfortunately don't have a crystal ball to tell you when that might happen again. But um, it normally would say we would say January, February time and then September, early October. Um, minus avoiding holiday weekends and everything in between those. Um, but that's when normal peak season is, but also you have to look what is best for you when you need to travel to as well. Um, next one is you wanna put your money where your priority is. So you wanna decide where you want to, where you wanna, like um, how many days you wanna stay or how many parks you wanna um, pick and everything, how many days of the parks you want to pick, um, what kind of hotel you want to stay at, do you want to stay on property or kind of off property, like the good neighbor hotels that um, Chrissy was talking about. So you kind of just have to figure out where you want to spend your money and what, and then once you're in the park, are you going to eat uh, more at the table service? Restaurants would tend to be more expensive to, compared to a quick service or bringing more like a lunch with you, some sandwiches and everything. Um, same with the snacks, like Christy said, like, are you gonna get some at the dollar store before you go? Mm -hmm. Or are you gonna pay the eight, nine dollars um, for a lollipop or a Mickey bar? Um, so, I mean, you, that's what you're gonna have to decide. You have to have a budget and everything um, with it. And then um, they're always, your your packages are always custom customable. Um, it's always depending on your desire, what you wanna do, what you wanna see. Um, just to let you know, like, Disney being so large, you're never going to see and do everything you know, on that for, on that one trip. Um, that's what the, the great magic of Disney is that there's always going to bring, they're always bringing something new in or they're always refurbishing something. So it brings you back um, and everything. So there's always a next time, hopefully. And then you want to maybe plan a down day. If you're staying at the resort, why not explore it and everything? Um, take some time, relax. Um, we love to do that um, as a family, um, kind of right in the middle of our like vacation, um, just for us to all recharge. Um, us parents need it too as well, just not the kids <laughs> and everything. Thing. So it's nice to kind of just uh, sleep in, not have a lot of plans, um, play in the pool. Um, you as a Disney resort guest can go and explore other resorts too. And we love to do that, especially certain times of the year, like around the holidays when all of the um, resorts are are beautifully decorated for the holidays and they have all the trees up and the gingerbread houses and um, just so many other activities that you can play with uh, or do. And you can always go to other resorts to eat too as well, which is fun. So, all right. So now benefits of using a travel advisor like ourselves. Um, so we're an expert. We will, we know I mean, we don't know everything, but we if we don't, we will we find don't. it out. <laughs> I know, I know, but we will find out because somebody, uh, one of us in our travel agency will know it. And we have plenty of, we've gotten plenty of training. Um, we've done so many webinars and um, gone to even like on property for training too as well. And we're here to advocate for you. We are here to navigate your travel, um, especially with the pandemic. We all know how things change. I mean, it's constantly changing day to day. And that, we're, that's where we're here. We're your one-stop shop. You're only one person to contact to, to give you all that information and provide you um, with the best recommendations and suggestions. Um, as, um, as of like we know that we want to customize your vacation that will fit for you and your family um, either be a family you just your family a multi-generate multi-generation where you know grandma grandpa or aunts and uncles and cousins are coming or maybe it's just the two of you you know like you never know or just mom and dad or mom and daughter or something so we're here to help you whatever way you want it um, financially and time wise too as well because we all know that everybody has busy lives and we're that's our job to help you um so you don't have to worry about the stress in, involved in it um we're here to promo watch too for you and find the best pricing um we are disney um, releases that kind of information to us that we will make sure that we get the best price for you. We know that your vacation is the, your investment and we treat it, well, we treat your vacation like it's our very own. Um, and then if we can't get exactly what you want, um, we'll keep 
dry in and everything. We'll find what what is the best fit for you. Um, that's a part of our one-on-one -on -one assistance and our concierge service, which is always complimentary. And like I said, we're the one-stop shop. Um, and this is all. This goes from before you travel, during your traveling, and then after you travel too, as well. And then we're here to um, give you. Um, we're the one that will go ahead and make all those phone calls for you. And we'll wait on the line for four hours for you because you that's today. what, yes, mm -hmm. like many of us have done and just, especially the, within the last, last few weeks, weeks. Yeah. <laughs> everything, it's been crazy. So. And then just to um, say a little more about promo watching. So a common question we do get mm -hmm. is if a promotion comes out, can I still apply that to my trip? Absolutely. So the difference is a benefit of using a travel advisor is like Jen said, um, if you were booked with a travel advisor and that's in their care, um, they're able to automatically add it for you. However, if you decide to book on your own, um, as many people still do, not quite sure why, because as we've presented, there's a lot of information, a lot of need to know things. Um, but if you do, yes, you can absolutely still apply a promotion. However, the only way you can do that to your own reservation would be by calling Disney directly. So anything else you wanted to add about that? I think that was Thank you. Pretty, covered covered, much. pretty much covered it all. So now to get you excited, we just want to share one of our favorite little um, YouTube videos. You might've seen it. It's a commercial. Um, let me see if I can do this as we practiced earlier. So I'm going to try. Okay. So now I need to do it. Yeah. You were supposed to provide my <laughs> share. You're not going to hear me for a minute because I need to share the, um, I'm going to share the video audio. So stick with us because after that, um, we want to answer any of your questions and we also have just a fun little giveaway. The magic is calling you to a celebration 50 years in the making. Feel the magic everywhere. Share the wonder of new unbelievable sights. Share the light all around you. And see the world you love shine like never before. Join us for the Walt Disney World 50th Anniversary Celebration. is calling you to a celebration. You're still muted, Liz. There. Okay. Yes. Okay. We made it. <laughs> you know, I was nervous about that part. Okay. So like I said, we would love to answer some of your questions. Um, I have the chat pulled up so I can share stuff from the chat and really quick everyone in the audience I'm going to launch a poll just to get some information for the library just asking if you have a library card and how many people are watching with you tonight so that's going to pop up on your screen. Um, we have a question can you explain the genie plus and do you think it's worth it. How much time do you have. Hold on I want to make sure that I. I'm not sharing my screen anymore, right? No, okay. you're not. Okay. It's just you guys. Okay. okay, yeah. Seriously, how much time do you have? So the Genie Plus system um, was something new that Disney has been working on for a very long time. Um, it's kind of similar to what we saw in the past that worked really well with Disneyland, which was called the Max Pass, but Disneyland in California now also has the Genie Plus program. Um, it's a lot. Like it came out in October. It took the place of um, the fast pass system that we've all grown to love in the past, which gave every single guest, whether they were a hotel guest or a non-resort guest, anybody with a ticket had the opportunity to book in advance three fast passes. Um, there have been some perks and also some like negative feedback about Genie Plus for sure. I think it's like anything new. Um, it needs some getting used to. It has some kinks to work out. It's still fairly new. Um, but Genie Plus. Well, the one thing that you can know about Genie Plus is that it can be purchased in advance or it can be purchased on a daily basis when you're there. So ultimately, you know, 
once you learn a little bit about the system, you have to decide if it's a worthwhile investment for your family because every family is different and every expectation for a family for a vacation is different. So do you want to go into your vacation knowing that you have Genie Plus for the entire length of stay? Then you can put that on your package. If you don't know and you want to pick and choose what days that you want to do it, you can add it through the app on a daily basis when you're there after midnight, the day you want to purchase it. You cannot purchase it the night before for the day that you want to use it. So there's a lot of timing involved in that um, and knowing when you can purchase it and when you can book. On-site guests have a little bit of an advantage with this system because of the booking times. Um, everybody can book at 7 a.m. for their first Genie, uh, but the individual lightning lanes, which are the paid ride attractions that are under the Genie umbrella, um, can be booked at 7 a.m. for on-site guests and at park opening for off-site guests. So again, it's everybody has a different feel about it. And um, you know, some families deem it worthwhile for the extra expense and some families don't. Just know that every attraction at Walt Disney World has a standby line and um, you can wait in that line if you want to. You're not going to be denied any attraction because you do not buy Genie Plus. If you want to move through some of your attractions faster, then Genie Plus is a good investment. But you need to learn the system and there is a lot of explanation to the system before you will be successful at using it when you're there. I could go on and about well, yeah, that for and hours. Tell, and, and we'll try not to just focus only on Genie Plus because I know there are a lot of questions about the questions. Yes. I mean, it could go on forever. Um, but I will say that, like we mentioned, it is, it's different in the old fast pass system in that you do not book anything ahead of time. Everything is done on the day of, um, starting at 7 a.m. You can, book, you can book that first lightning lane if you are staying at a Walt Disney World Resort hotel. Um, Non-resort guests can only start when the park actually officially opens. So say a park opens at nine o'clock, that's when they're able to pick their first Genie experience. So that's kind of a perk of staying um, at a Disney hotel. And then the way it works is, um, so then you pick your first, say you're staying at a Disney hotel, you pick your first lightning lane attraction. That's what they're calling those new expedited lines, the lightning lanes. So you pick your first lightning lane through the My Disney Experience app right at seven o'clock on the dot. You choose that and then, um, you know, you finish getting ready, eat your breakfast, head to the park, say the park opens at nine o'clock, you enter the park at nine o'clock. Um, and then two hours after that is when you can choose your next lightning lane experience in, um, again, in the app. Or if you chose something, say, that started at 930. So you actually have a, an hour time frame to get there from 930 to 1030. Say that's when you chose your first one. So if you scan in for that first lightning lane before the two hours um, approaches, then you can either, you'll be able to um, choose your next lightning lane as soon as you scan in for the first one. So it's whatever happens first, either two hours later, or if you scan in and you've used one, you are then able to choose your next one. I have found personally, Genie Plus is excellent to use at Magic Kingdom, mainly because that's the park with the most attractions. Um, the last time I used it was in January. I took my daughter, just the two of us for a girl's long weekend, um, and we were able to between the standby, the regular lines, and using Genie Plus Lightning Lanes, we were able to do, I think I counted 14 experiences, um, getting to the park around 1030, enjoying a breakfast, a sit down breakfast, and, and having a quick service dinner. We still enjoyed everything we wanted to do. So you definitely you know, have to play with it. It's one of those things where you can learn a lot about it and read up on it and ask questions beforehand, but it's also um, being there and actually seeing how it works and making sense of it can that I, way too. Can I add Absolutely. one more thing? The, the one thing that is important to know is that you can read something somewhere online from two weeks ago, and it actually can be different today. Within the last two weeks, Disney pulled four of the individual Lightning Lane attractions and moved them into Genie Plus through August 7th. So if you read something about Genie Plus from January 1st, it's not current information. So um, you really need to understand and know how the system is working. And like we said earlier, things are changing all the time. So be very careful if you're reading something on the internet that you are reading the most up-to-date information because every day it seems that something changes. Sure. Um, you guys have another question in the chat. Um, I have a question about parks opening before their advertised time. How early do you recommend getting there? Are you a resort guest or an offsite guest? Yeah, that's important to know. That's important to know. 
Well, how about we explain it? Do you want to do you want to take that one and just explain how that would work if you were a ho Disney, Disney hotel, hotel guest? So okay. as a Disney resort guest, one of the perks you do get is to that you have um, an early early park and a mission. So it's 30 minutes prior to the park opens. Now, with like Chrissy said, that every day is new. Um, so the, with the spring break crowds are changing, the parks have the hours have been adjusted um, within the next few weeks and everything. Not so much. A, with the parks being open a little bit earlier than they normally are, they're extended more too as well. Um, so for instance, Magic Kingdom normally eight, opens at 9 a.m. As a resort guest, you would get early entry at 8.30, um, but you can get there before that time. Um, so you can hop into your favorite um, ride into your attraction. And then once 8.30 um, officially uh, um, hits the dot, then they open the attraction then at that point. So you could be in line for, well, half hour, 20 minutes, you know, waiting for your attraction to open at 8.30, but it still, it gives you a lot of time to still ride that ride and maybe get over to the other ones. Um, we did for Hollywood Studios when we went in January. Um, we got at Hollywood, the Hollywood Studios early park missions um, began at 8.30 and we got there about 8.10, went straight to rise, was, um, we were already on the, we already rode the ride and in line for Smuggler's Run by nine o'clock. So, um, that's where, you know, the, that's a great benefit as a resort guest. Now, if you're a non-resort guest, um, then you just have, you're only allowed to stay, uh, we'll come in at park, um, when the park officially opens and they will hold you back too, mm -hmm. as well, they because they do scan, um, your phone, your magic band to make sure it's valid that you are a resort guest coming into that early park. If you're not, they make you go over to the side and wait in line until the park officially opens. And my rule of thumb is about an hour, mm -hmm. um, about an hour earlier than the posted official park opening time is when I might tell a family if they can get their kids up and up and running that early, um, you know, grab a quick breakfast, take it with you and head to the park about an hour early. And another tip, don't go into the park at that time and get coffee. Because <laughs> Starbucks, it's just like the, the Starbucks, Starbucks here on Valley Brook Road. going to be an hour when you get in the park and you are throwing that time that you want to use to ride rides out the window. So, oh, which is a great tip. Drink yes. wine, drink wine. Drink, drink wine, drink, drink wine, coffee, drink, drink, drink coffee from your hotel room before <laughs> you leave. Wine would help too, I think, but anyhow. <laughs> no, but the rooms do come equipped with the, the coffee makers in the um, deluxe and deluxe villa um, Disney hotels. And they come with either coffee, like to make a full pot of coffee or um, Keurig so machines. Cool. And um, they are, they're provided, the Keurig cups are provided as well as, you know, the, the disposable styrofoam um, cups, the stirrer. Um, and also I think powdered creamer yes, but as I well take, as like sugar and sweetener, but we, we I like travel to take, with my own non-dairy. Yeah. You can get the little coffee meat creamers. And so we bring those along. You can actually get them at the food court too. Oh okay. yeah. Good tip. Yeah. So good tip. I Thank you. Um, there was another question. What is the name of your ag agency? So I typed in there dreamers do travels, mm -hmm. um, for anyone asking, there was another question. Can you clarify the genie plus versus ILL and which one uses the 120 minute rule? You explained that in your last, um, as you were going yeah, over yeah, all of we the- We kind of explained that, but I think the ILL, so that's the individual lightning lane. We didn't go into full detail about that. Like Christy said, that just recently changed as far as what attractions participate in that. Just briefly again, because this is an, a subject that could go on for an hour, um, just, just to keep it a little brief, um, individual lightning lane, what that is, what that was at the beginning, back in October when the system was rolled out, it meant that the top two most popular attractions at um, each of the four theme parks, um, those were actually available for separate purchase, which meant right at seven o'clock on the dot, fastest fingers, um, you have to be on it at seven o'clock in the app. Um, you can purchase those individual lightning lanes for those two most popular attractions at each of the parks um, for a separate price. And the nice thing about that, though, is that you don't need to have Genie Plus purchased on top of it. So if you don't want to do the full $15 per person per day, you only want to ride Rise of the Resistance, you can decide just to purchase that. And at that, it's not a free-for-all as far as when you can go. They do have to keep, you know, the, t the times monitored and make it make sense for those of you that are purchasing that. So you do actually pick, um, when you pay for it, you're also picking a, an hour time frame. Um, I do have to say, they do still accept you if you're running a little bit late. So say it's a 1030 to 1130 um, attraction, whether that's just the Genie Plus Lightning Lane or the individual Lightning Lane selections, they do give some flexibility. They know things happen with transportation, with rides, you know, breaking down um, or with meals going over. So 
keep that in mind. Don't sweat that. And also a little tip that I learned on one of my um, most recent trips was they will actually let you in for your lightning lane five minutes That's early. Right. So that might not sound like much, just like the half an hour early doesn't sound like much in the mornings to, to gain access into the park. Um, but you would be surprised because like I said, as soon as you scan your, whether you're using that, you know, the magic band, your phone or that plastic um, ticket, when you scan that through the little lightning lane beeper to go through, um, as soon as that is done, you can hop on the app and you can choose your next attraction. So that's really how you can, you can kind of almost stack them. You can really make the most of your time. We have one more question in the chat. And then if anyone wants to um, turn on their camera and microphone, you definitely can. If staying at POP Century, what time would you get in line? I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, pop Century. Pop Century pop, is okay. a value resort. So my question is, it would be also dependent on, are you going to take the Skyliner or are you going to take a bus? Well, they said, um, what time would you get in line for the bus to get to Magic Kingdom for rope drop minimum, to take advantage of the early access? Minimum hour before yeah. that early access time. Minimum hour. Yes. So if the park was opening, it's 8.30, you want to be in that line at 7.30 so you can be in the front of the line. And, with your coffee. Yeah, with your <laughs> coffee. Because you're not getting coffee from point A to point B. Um, but yeah, yes, that if, if you want to be in the front, that's what you do. Okay, and then one more just came in. At Magic Kingdom, is parent swap an option? Can you use parent swap with Jeannie? Yeah, Actually, it's a, a parent swap or um, rider swap swab uh, switch, sw yeah. switch um yeah. is not is available at all parks and everything um you just have to it, um you have to be present all the whole group has to be present so they can see verify that the kid is younger is not of height requirement or there's an explanation i know like some kids are dilly afraid of certain like the we'll say space mountain because it's in the dark um so then they can go ahead and give you um they can scan your um band or your um, phone then to get access and everything. Um, so once you get in line and with, we'll say, um, mom and kid, once they're done, they'll come out and then they'll go ahead and then dad and the other kid can go in and don't have to stand in the line again. And they just go actually in the, the lightning lane part of it. Um, with Jeannie, I don't, it does, does, it does, uh, it does work with Jeannie. Yeah, Jeannie, but they're not, be, they're not as like with, with, with Jeannie, because you have an hour window, they're just letting you do it or anything, just switching them and everything. No, that, Unless it's, you're getting close to the time frame of at the end of your like Now that, Jeannie I can tell you that with the individual lightning lanes, if you want to do that parent swap, everybody has to have it purchased. Yeah. You can't, you can't yeah. say, well, mom purchased mm -hmm. individual lightning lane and now I'm going to swap. Everybody yeah. has to have yeah. that yeah. actual pass purchased. Yeah. Okay, I'm cool. sorry. I'm on my phone because my computer wouldn't upload the Zoom, but I do have a question about the electronic wheelchairs because I was there two years ago, and I can no longer walk. Do you have any um, uh, advice for uh, getting it through Disney or going off-site to get one? So we actually have a preferred um, scooter company that we like to use that we've had nothing but fantastic experiences with. It's called Walker Mobility. And um, they have all different sizes of scooters, wheelchairs, um, and it's really just a fantastic service because unlike the ones that you can rent from Disney from the parks um, that you have to then return to the park, you can't take them out of the parks and you have to rent one every day. Uh, Walker Mobility will actually meet you, drop it off and meet you at your hotel. And then again, upon pickup, they will um, pick it up from you at your hotel. It's a per day price. And to be honest, it's quite reasonable. Um, I priced it out just today for a six day stay for somebody and it was around $85. So considering that includes, you know, all of the stress of like how you're going to get it and how you're going to get it back. Um, that's definitely the one that we, that's the yes. top that we recommend. They're fantastic to work with. Um, there, there are several others too. If you simply Google, you know, scooter rental um, company Disney. and read some reviews like for around Disney world, um, you'll find many, but Walker is definitely a great one. W A L K E R. And this one says, oh, with Jeannie Plus, does your entire party have to pick the same ride? No, no. but nope. you do not all have to pick the same ride. Mom and dad can go on one and, um, you know, the teenage kids can go on another. Um, is it true Stoller Rentals no longer deliver to the resorts? 
they do yeah. deliver mm -hmm. to the resorts, but you must meet them. Mm -hmm. you, you yeah, that's to, the only difference. Yeah, that's and that's that's a stick point for some people because you know you have to coordinate your flight arrival time and you know with when you want to pick your stroller up. They used to give them to Bell Services and it became overwhelming. So not only do you have to meet them when you get your stroller, you also have to um, meet them when before you depart. So timing that with parks and the amount of time you have at your resort can be tricky. And Jamie, let me know if you want me to set you up with that, because I know you have a fantastic trip being planned yeah. right now. So I can set you up with our stroller company. Um, and the nice thing about the strollers, again, like she said, they'll, they'll meet you. You choose the time um, based on what's available with them. They give you several options and they'll meet you there. They'll pick it up from you. They're fully sanitized in between um, each child that uses them. They're like brand new strollers. So, and they come with your name on the back. So, you know, when you leave it outside of a ride, you know which stroller is yours. So can that's I, fantastic. Can I put my stroller tip in there real quick? Yes, please I do. know probably contradictory to everybody's opinion. I don't love big strollers. Now my kids are 16 and 13 now, so it's irrelevant. But we used to buy an inexpensive umbrella stroller because the hardest part I see parents struggle with are folding up those double strollers and putting them on the bus to go to the resorts. They have to be collapsed. You cannot just wheel them on the buses. And so having an umbrella stroller that would collapse very easily, um, and like I said, an inexpensive one for Walmart was worth its weight in gold for our family. That's not necessarily the case for everybody, but we liked that idea. And that's, that's true, especially if you if you have to keep the child contained going um, through the airport too. And so you might want to bring your own stroller from home. Yep. Um, umbrella stroller, it really does the trick, you know, as they obviously not little ones, but like as they are toddler age. Um, somebody asked, what service would you recommend to get from the airport to the hotel? You have several options now. Um, Disney's Magical Express Motor Coach, which was complimentary, that is a thing of the past. The whole reason for that is because Disney decided when their contract was up with the company called Mears, M-E-A-R-S, um, when their contract was up at, as of the end of 2021, they decided not to renew that contract. But have no fear because Mirrors Connect has now taken the, the place of that. Um, it's just a paid option now. And quite frankly, I think it's reasonable. Um, I, I it's do. a reasonable option. And um, some people still choose to just do Uber or Lyft. That is plentiful in Central Florida, no matter the time of day or night. But if you are somebody that likes to have something set up ahead of time, um, if you like to, you know, if you have little ones that you're traveling with, it's just good to have that option. So Mirrors Connect, um, still the same type of service, still the same company that Disney it's used, not Disney movies just not on Disney the movies bus. on the bus, but still the type Disney of customer Magic. service yeah. that, that you actually come took to know over the, the area of mm -hmm. the airport. Yeah, it's Magical the same Express exact area where Magical Express used to be um, past the rental cars. So, yep, and that's, that's a great question. Looks like that's about it, Sydney. Okay, um, I know you guys had something extra special you wanted to do too. How do you want people to answer? So, well, first, let's present what we have. So these are um, limited time, um, iridescent ears that are celebrating the 50th, so brand new pair of ears. Um, I'm not sure. I think there are a few people that have joined that aren't local. I'm sorry. This is a local giveaway just because we're going to leave it here with Sydney at the library and put your name on it um, to whoever wins. So it's an adult size. Um, I'll just say whoever yeah, that's one size fits all. Yeah, so yeah. let's do this. We'll do whoever comments the correct answer in the chat. So get the chat ready. We'll give you a second here. Um, and this is a two-part question. So you have to have both um, both of the answers correct. All right. You ready? Mm -hmm. All right. So um, the question is, what year, we mentioned this earlier, so you shouldn't be Googling. Um, what year did Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida open? And And when does the 50th celebration go through at the Walt Disney World Resort? So what year did the park open? And right um, that one, Taylor. That's see. what I think I saw. See Taylor first. Oh, Taylor, listen tonight. <laughs> yep, Taylor, yeah, was, the first Taylor one. was the first one to have both parts. I'm All sure right. Had Looks 1st. like Taylor D has it correct. So, yes, it is October 1st, 1971. The Magic Kingdom opened its doors. And um, the 50th celebration does go through April 2023. So congratulations, Taylor. We will leave these here with your name on it um, with Sydney at, on the second floor of the library. So let's see. Any other questions? Okay, and Taylor, I just sent you a message so I could get your last name on there as well. Um, 
if you don't want the whole world to know it, you can just <laughs> private, private message me. Um, but thank you guys so much for tonight's information. Yeah, well, thank you so much again for the invitation. I mean, this is, as you know, Sydney, this is my home away from home. We love the library. So when given the chance to present something we love, um, we're happy to. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask Sydney for our information. We'd be glad to share. Um, thank you so much for spending part of your evening with us. Yes. yes. Thank you. And have a magical night. Have a magical <laughs> night. <laughs>